My physics prof used to call physics the queen of the sciences. He was right, of course. Physics sets laws for everything and everyone, and this means it also shapes life. I don't just mean that physics is the reason why coffee doesn't levitate into your mouth, but that physics determines how organisms grow and move. These laws of life are universal. They hold on any planet, so they are super relevant to our search for extraterrestrials. And just in the past months, we've seen some very interesting new research on this. Life doesn't get to pick its physics. Fluid dynamics, gravity, electrodynamics, friction, material, strength, elasticity, viscosity, you name it. These apply to any organism anywhere all the time. They're basically the terms and conditions of the universe you better accept them. And they give rise to relations between the sizes of living things and what they can do. The reason that flies can crawl on the ceiling and we can't isn't that flies know a special trick. It's just that they're less affected by gravity and more by friction and contact forces. More generally, physics means that small creatures live in a world where viscosity and friction dominate, whereas large animals live in a world where inertia and gravity dominate. But there's more. Biologists have catalogued a lot of regularities in the motion of animals like that bigger birds flap their wings more slowly or that animals with longer legs take fewer steps. But why? Maybe we could just ask the birds? No, we'll do it the physicist's way. We start from equations and derive those regularities. In a paper which appeared just two weeks ago, physicists use a very simple argument to make a surprising prediction for life on other planets. They say they can derive how an organism grows directly from constants of nature. They argue it all comes down to chemical bond energies and reaction rates, and that's ultimately physics. From this, they conclude that while the growth of an organism depends sensitively on the temperature of the environment, the efficiency at which these organisms use energy doesn't. If they're right, this means basically life on colder planets evolves slower, but it still evolves. So you can see how this is relevant for our expectations for life on other planets. Another recent paper is even more ambitious. In it, a group of physicists look at scaling laws across species of both plants and animals. They use fluid dynamics and the physics of elastic materials to compare similarly shaped organisms at different sizes. These simple assumptions give rise to some general relations. One is through a parameter that separates vicious from inertia motion, so it basically separates the regime of small animals from larger animals. Another one compares how easily a body deforms to how fast the parts of the body move. From this, they conclude that as an organism becomes bigger, either their stiffness must increase so that parts don't buckle or flutter, or the organism must move slower. Then they look at a lot of data from microbes to reptiles like wing flaps and stride frequency versus body mass, or swimming or flight speed versus length, and generally they find that their super simple scaling laws fit well. It's kind of a unified theory of life. And in the third paper that I have for today, a physicist says one can calculate how long a cell is going to live. It all depends on how long the cell can generate power, he says, and that in return depends on how pure the fluid inside a cell is. This, so the author claims, means one can measure how well a cell is doing with simple osmotic tests and get a single number that tracks functional resilience across tissues. Yes, that does sound a little overly simplistic. Physicists meddling in biology have a tough time. This is because, in all fairness, oftentimes it's just nonsense. Biology is difficult and physicists tend to oversimplify complex systems to the point that their theories are neat but unrealistic. That said, I think that this is an important research direction and that it'll just take time for interdisciplinary efforts to work out. I'm fully convinced that biology will become increasingly more mathematical and increasingly more like physics physics as time goes on, because we'll understand better how to mathematically deal with the complexity. Welcome to the new physics of life. Please keep your limbs inside the parameter space at all times.
I don't like wasting my time because in research, every second counts. And today's sponsor, UPDF, has helped me save a lot of time. UPDF is an all-in-one PDF toolkit to work faster and smarter. It lets you edit text, images, and layout. You can highlight, annotate, and comment. You can turn scans into editable text and convert PDFs to Word, PowerPoint, or images. You can merge, split, and organize files, and all of that as a fraction of the cost of Adobe. The UPDF interface is clean and easy to use and now also comes with an AI assistant. It can search for credible sources, summarize long reports and compare or translate documents, works on all major operating systems and syncs across devices. It's really super useful. And of course, I have a special offer. This Black Friday, you can get all UPDF features for about one-sixth of a day. Adobe's price. Download it now and take the pain out of PDFs. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.